My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I wanna talk about researching the dividend aristocrats and really help new investors who are looking to do research on the dividend aristocrats and to really optimize that process. A couple of weeks ago, I shared an entire video here, uh, how to invest in dividend aristocrats. I walked through the different ways you can either invest into an ETF or you can screen individual companies. And in this video today, I'm gonna to share a little bit of a more optimized way using Seeking Alpha of how you can screen the dividend yield, the payout ratio, the dividend growth, and make it a little bit easier for you, and just some, some cool ways to, to do that. Because when I first started learning about dividend investing, I kind of you know brute forced it. I did a lot of manual work, a lot of research from, from different websites. And so this video, I wanna share with you some things that I've learned and some things that I wish I would have known you know, a couple of years back that would have made my life so much easier when investing into individual companies. So if you're an, e an ETF only investor, you're gonna get some value out of this video, but this is really for those individual dividend investors that are looking to invest in individual companies. And I'm gonna share with you how you can screen these different companies in a more effective way. Before we dive into that, let's take a look at my portfolio. Holy cow, I guess I'm poor now. Um, I mean, <laughs> not quite, but the uh, the portfolio is definitely down. I just am accepting the fact that uh, the there's more red days than green days. It's the complete opposite of during the, you know, the pandemic when the market essentially only went up. But I guess, you know, I just want to be transparent that I'm going to show you here on YouTube. If you've been following the channel, you're going to see in the green days, you're going to see the red days. Whatever my portfolio is doing, I'm going to show it. I mean, I, I'm very transparent. I, I list every single company that I'm invested in, every ETF. And it's just kind of how, how things work when you invest in the stock market. You know, when there's a market pullback, a lot of investors kind of reassess their, their risk tolerance. And a lot of times we kind of uh, take a step back and we're a little bit more risk averse. And so I wanna talk a little bit more and more about the dividend aristocrats because what's so great about the dividend aristocrats is the predictable nature of the dividend income if you're a dividend investor. And especially if you're like my wife and I who are looking to live fully 100% off of our dividend portfolio in early retirement, this predictability of the dividend is so, so important at least for us, and I'm sure a lot of you watching this video are in the same boat here. When you look at Noble, Noble is an equal weight dividend aristocrat ETF index from ProShares, and when comparing the Noble ETF, the performance of the dividend aristocrats with the S&P 500, you can see that the, you know, the dividend aristocrats are outperforming the broader market today. And this is looking at the total market with the dividend reinvested. And so, Dividend aristocrats are really, really a way to shield yourself from this market volatility that we're seeing. Yeah, sure, yes, they are also down as well, but they're not down as bad. They're not, there's not as much volatility in this index than with the broader market. But yeah, investing in the dividend aristocrats is a great way to shield yourself from the market volatility. And if you are investing into these companies, these you know dividend aristocrats, you're probably feeling a little like this. Gosh, oh, it's golden. I love it. I love it. All right, cool. So let's take a look at, let me share with you how I used to screen dividend aristocrats and how I used to do this. And I'm going to show you in a minute, you know, a little bit of an easier way to do it. All right. So before what I used to do is I used to go over to Finviz. It's a free website and I would track the dividend, you know, metrics in on this website. I would look at the dividend yield, I'd look at the dividend percentage, I would look at the uh, the earnings per share, I would look at the dividend growth, I look at their earnings, I look at their PE ratio, all of that kind of stuff, and I would track this on you know a manual basis. And I used to have an old Excel sheet that I would follow this. It was just a lot of work. And so this is how I used to research. I'd also use websites like Seeking Alpha and I'd go under the dividend section and I would search, you know, I'd look at the dividend history of 
the company. I look at the dividend growth of the company, you know, the, all the different metrics that came with it. I look at the dividend yield. So speaking specifically about today's video around the four year average yield. So this is how I would track this. For example, I'd see, okay, what is the four year average yield of Target? It is 2.18%. What is, uh, what is Target yielding today? It's yielding 3%, 3%. I, I just can't even believe it. Um, if, you, if you look here over the last couple of months, if not years, I guess, uh, it's been really, really pricey. And so if you've been averaging in like I was, um, you were not getting the best price for Target. But today, if you look at it, Target is trading at a pretty dang good uh, you know, starting dividend yield. Target is a company that I own in my portfolio. Let's take a look at Lowe's. Lowe's has also been under a lot of pressure. The four year average dividend yield of Lowe's is um, 1.6. The forward dividend yield is 2.44. So Lowe's, you know, compared to its four year dividend, you know, four year average is trading at a pretty fair, fair value in, in my opinion. You know, obviously without going in and looking at the other fundamentals, the revenue growth, the, you know, all, all of those other things when I'm just looking at the dividend. Um, and with dividend aristocrats, I, I feel like in, in most cases you can kind of look, keep it high level. I don't think you have to look at every single, look at all four of their balance sheets, like the cat, like you don't have to look at all of those things, in my opinion, especially if you're first starting out with the dividend aristocrats. Now with other companies, yeah, I'm probably going to do that. Uh, once again, like you gotta you gotta find your risk tolerance and your your uh, your balance for you. But for me, like honestly, I feel pretty comfortable with the level of high level research that I do with the dividend aristocrats. So that's just my opinion. Uh, with Kimberly Clark, they have a 3.24 average uh, dividend yield, four year dividend yield. Right now they're yielding a forward dividend yield of 3.81. So, you know, Kimberly Clark stays right around that three, three and a half range. You can see that probably on this chart right here. They're, they're usually in that three range. So this one, um, you know, anytime it gets over three and a half percent, you see this right here, it's always for me, it's like, ah, okay, this is a, a, a you know, a better value play. Uh, let's take a look at 3M. 3M, for example, has a, a four year average dividend yield of 3.3. What is the forward? Look at this, this is absolutely insane. Um, now 3M has been kind of hit, you know, with the trade wars here a couple of years back in, in ongoing and with raging inflation, all of this stuff, 3M is kind of in a unique situation, but the fundamentals of their business are still pretty strong. They have a, a good, healthy uh, payout ratio relative to their history, but they have a really high starting dividend yield. So pretty, pretty interesting. What, one thing that you'll notice with 3M is if you go back uh, years ago, you are not getting a high dividend yield with 3M. It's really just been here with the, the trade wars and here with the pandemic that you'll see this dividend yield um, really, really creeping up here. So I don't know, these are just a few examples. If you wanna look at a few others here, I'll leave this link in the description below. This is just at random, a few of them that I, I pulled here. So there's eight of them here, four of them I own. So we talked about Target, we talked about Lowe's, Kimberly Clark, 3M. A few others that are pretty interesting right now are as, uh, these four I do not own in my portfolio today. Uh, Walgreens, T Row, PPG, and Medtronics. All dividend aristocrats have uh, been paying, you know, yeah, like these these companies, they're also trading at a pretty fair value. So everything that I just showed you is pretty manual, right? We went through each individual, you know, uh, company, we, we screened it. Now what I used to do is I used to even try to do this a little bit easier with Yahoo Finance and try to screen it, you know, with their portfolio builder or their watch list builder or whatever, and you can, you know, have different views based off of different things. This worked out okay, but they don't have a lot of stuff. I mean, they have the trailing in the four PE. So this is the valuation, which was kind of nice. Uh, what I like to do is, you know, I have my portfolio here and I would track the 52 week, you know, the percentage and say, okay, target, you know, what's really crazy though. Six months ago, target was way down here way down here. The market has shifted so drastically these uh, these last six months. But this is the way that I used to do it. And it was kind of my go to with tracking the portfolio overall. But there's actually an easier way to do this. 
and I'll show you how to do this in Seeking Alpha. So if you really want to level up your skills when it comes to screening for dividend growth, screening your portfolio, and have everything at, one, at an eye's glance, like this is absolutely incredible. I have the, the premium version from Seeking Alpha. You do not need a premium version to be able to do this. Some of the stuff you're not going to be able to access and view. For example, a lot of this here on the left, the, uh, the grades, that is part of the premium subscription. Um, but you can do this with a free version to try it out and see if it's something that you want to do. But so here, um, I guess to explain this a little bit, you can upload your portfolio and have your actual, your real time, real portfolio um, holdings, and you can analyze it here in Seeking Alpha. And you can do that with a free version as well. What you do is um, you can link your brokerage. This is exactly how I did it. Let's see if we can pull it up here. It's through Play. It's pretty awesome. You don't have to do it individually. Um, and once again, this is with the free version as well. Uh, you can go to M1 Finance here. You enter in your login information, and then what it will do, it, it, it will sync up your portfolio, and you can see all of your holdings, the amount of shares that you have, you can see here, all of the individual holdings that I have in my portfolio, the portfolio value right here. Uh, this is kind of a depressing site that my portfolio is down. But anyways, <laughs> you can, if you want to see a lot of red, click on this. Sure. Um, but this is kind of cool. You can see your own portfolio if you wanted to upload it. It doesn't have to be M1 Finance. It could be any brokerage. And you can access all of the dividend information, the valuation, the screeners, everything in this section. So for example, and I'll show this in a minute with the dividend aristocrats, but if I wanted to do this with my portfolio, I can see, okay, which companies are yielding um, at attractive values? And given right now, probably a lot of them are with, my, with the way the market's going. So ideally what you're looking for when you're comparing the four-year average with the, the current forward uh, dividend yield is you want this to be higher than this in order for it to be I guess a, a a value or you know you're getting a bigger bang for your buck right and with inflation i think everybody can agree you know there's there's not a lot of value to be found out there i spent over ten dollars on a freaking chipotle burrito rice beans and uh, a little bit of meat and a tortilla i, I wanted to scream i couldn't believe it ten dollars I, I was used to paying like 750 and so yeah, I'm sure if you're in like New York or California, you're like, well, I pay $15. But yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Philip Morris, Southern Company. Utilities are historically a value, but they're not a value today. They're not a value today. 3M, this is the example we used earlier, right? You can go down the list and you can see all the holdings in your portfolio. But what I want to show you is if you're really just interested in the dividend aristocrats, you can do it in the dividend aristocrats. And so let me show you really quick how you can build this yourself because I'm a nice guy and I have nothing better to do on a Sunday than help people that I've never met here on the internet. Let me show you how you can do this yourself. And once again, you don't have to have a premium version to do this. Um, I think they have a limit on the number of portfolios you can have, but let me show you how you can do this for free. So in my other video from two weeks ago, I showed you that list. Remember from, from Sure Dividend, if you watched that video, uh, you can take that exact list. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, we got it here. These are all, so if you download that list that I showed in that video, you'll see all of these right here. What you can do is you can go down the entire list uh, let me show you two ways that you can do it. You can go here and you can copy it and then you can, um, uh, let's see here. Let's, let's, let me just show you how you can do this yourself. We're going to create a portfolio V2, create portfolio. I'm doing this live. So let's see if this works. Uh, control V and then here it is. They're all in here and then you can hit done and it'll create a new portfolio for you. Now, if you don't have this, this Excel sheet right here, um, because once again, I have nothing better to do on a Sunday, I'll just make it super easy on you. I will copy and paste every, all those 67 companies in the description below. All you have to do is scroll down, copy and paste, and you can do it yourself. So you don't have to have that Excel file. I'll, I'll leave it down in the bottom for you if you want to do that. Okay, so cool. So now let's take a look at this and let me walk you through some of the things that I personally look at when I'm screening for for different things like the payout ratio, the price to earnings ratio, the dividend growth, 
Uh, all of those fun, fun things that the dividend investors are looking for. Um, I'm not gonna go too, too deep into like the debt, the short long-term debt. I'm not gonna look into earnings growth. I'm not gonna look at, at that stuff. Um, that stuff maybe I can do in a future video if that's of interest, but let's just kind of look at some of the dividend stuff, all right? So we're gonna focus here, we're gonna go on the dividend section and like before, we're gonna screen here for the four year average yield. And once again, right, this video is more so if you're picking individual stocks, this is how you can do this in a little bit of an easier way where you don't have to build your own Excel sheets and do all that stuff that I used to do because I, I don't know, that's just what I used to do. But yeah, once again, what you want is you want the, the forward yield to be higher than the four-year average yield. And you can see, all right, let's see where we can find some value. So Chevron is absolutely not in, a, in value territory. Once again, relative, so everything take everything with a grain of salt, uh, relative to the last four years. Um, and this is not the one and all indicator, right? I just think it's a super easy way for, for your average person to kind of calculate value um, we, this works really well with dividend aristocrats, um, assuming that they continue to pay an increasing dividend. I wouldn't necessarily rely on this method with companies that have cut their dividend in the past because it's not a true indicator. Then you're gonna have to really look at the, the revenue growth rate. You're gonna have to look at the different margins. Like it's gonna be a little bit messier, but we're gonna keep it super easy here. Let's look at this. Leggett and Platt here is absolutely in value territory when comparing it to where it's been trading these last four years. This was the Walgreens that we were talking about earlier. A 3M, we talked about that. Um, Kimberly Clark, we talked about that. Coca-Cola. Now, Coca-Cola today is not in value territory. You know, based on its uh, historical, you know, dividend yield that it's traded at. So I personally would not be really, really focused on, on Coca-Cola today. Just looking at a few others here, UPS in value territory. I think you, you get the gist here. So this is a way that you can track this. You can see the... Uh, you know, the performance of, you know, the individual companies as it stands today. So that's what the, uh, comparing the dividend yield. Now let's take a look and let's see if we can look at a few other things. This may be really interesting for a lot of you. So we're gonna scroll over here and what I wanna look at is the four year average payout. Now the payout ratio, I, I, sh I shared a video on this a couple of weeks ago. You can check out that on my channel here. But the payout ratio is essentially the company's ability to raise its dividend. If the payout ratio is over 100%, that is very, very scary. That's not a good thing. Now the payout ratio, I don't wanna go into too much detail. You can watch that other video, but you wanna have a buffer. You wanna have, the lower the payout ratio in most cases, the better, but it's not always the case for all sectors. For example, utilities trade with a higher payout ratio, sin stocks, higher payout ratio. Technology stocks should pay at a lower payout ratio, as well as discretionary stocks, right? Consumer discretionary will pay, have a lower payout ratio, and consumer staples will have a higher payout ratio. Okay, everybody follow? All right, we're on the same page. Now, what I wanna show you here is I wanna avoid these, these rates here. Um, we'll not, let's not take a look at the rates. Let's take a look at Coca-Cola, for example. Coca-Cola has a four-year average payout of 69%, okay? It currently has a 70 payout ratio. You know what that means? That means if you buy today, you're not gonna really be able to partake in the dividend increase um, at current prices because you are, you're paying a premium for the stock at its current level today. Now, let's look at, for example, Pepsi. Pepsi is the exact same case where it has, it's trading on par with its four-year average, okay? Let's look at another one here. Uh, let's look at McDonald's. This is really interesting. So it has, on average, a 63% payout ratio, but it currently is paying a 55%. So what that means is, if you were to buy McDonald's today, there is a lot of room for McDonald's to grow its dividend and be on par with its four-year average. So this is something that gets me really, really excited. And if you're a stock picker, if you invest in individual stocks and you really, you know, maybe you don't use M1 Finance, you use like a Fidelity, and you're handpicking which companies to invest in, this is something that can get you really 
This can be really exciting and this is something that you can use when kind of gauging for value as well as future potential dividend increases. This is a great way to, to research and to do that. Now let's use another example, Kimberly Clark. Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, it has a higher payout ratio than its four-year average. On the flip side though, it does pay a starting dividend yield higher than its four-year average. Okay, so the thing with Kimberly Clark is if you invest in these current levels, you can't really necessarily expect or assume a really dr drastic dividend increases given where their payout ratio is today. Now, this is one thing that you, if you really, really want to get good at this, you know, you could look at the, the revenue growth and you can see, you know, the earnings growth really not not just the revenues growth the earnings growth and that's where you're going to be able to see okay they're growing their their earnings then they'll be able to increase their dividend all right so these are just a few examples and you can do this for all of the holdings in your portfolio all of the the dividend aristocrats and then the last thing that i really like to look at is the dividend growth over the five year range here and you can see which companies are growing their dividend but this is something that i really want to show you that i think may be pretty cool so look at this lowe's has a dividend growth rate over the last five years annualized about 18%. But look at this, their payout ratio is 26%, whereas their four-year average is just under 31%. So despite having such a high dividend growth rate, you know, if they keep this up, now I know there's, a, you know, with Lowe's and with, with Target, there's a lot of, you know, supply issues, supply chain issues right now and inventory issues. But this is something to kind of look at and see, okay, if you want to cherry pick and pick individual stocks, these are some things that you can do to level up your, your, your game when it comes to uh, investing into individual dividend stocks. Okay. So that's something that I look at. Another thing that I'm obviously looking at as well is the uh, PE ratio. Now, we're not going to look at, at REITs because REITs, you're looking at the funds from operation. PE ratio is irrelevant. I say again, irrelevant when it comes to REITs. So don't look at PE when you're looking at REITs. But let's look at, for example, Cintas. Cintas has a really high forward PE ratio. That's pretty scary, especially when you're seeing uh, margin contraction and you're seeing uh, these multiple multiple contraction and where you're seeing the S&P 500 revert back to uh, you know a long-term historical average around 15 to 20 20 that's pretty scary if you see a company here with a high PE I, I don't know but here's the one thing that I will say dividend aristocrats they demand a higher price to earnings ratio because they are dividend aristocrats because they are such high quality and that's something that you'll notice you know, you'll see, you can look at charts from Coca-Cola, you know, years and years, like ever since Warren Buffett invested into Coca-Cola, you got that Warren Buffett effect where the company, the stock will immediately trade at a premium because of that status of dividend aristocrat or because, you know, the Warren Buffett effect, right? So that's something to, to definitely consider, but that's something that you can look at. You can look at the valuation, you know, the PE ratio, you can look at the uh, the earnings. We talked about that. Um, let, let me see here. Let's look at what is another one that I want to show you. This is this is really the one that I would look at. Is you can look at the revenue growth, but I want to look at the earnings, the earnings per share, the earnings growth. That's what I'm I'm looking for is the earnings growth. But anyways, so this is a way that you can track your portfolio that you can. If you're interested specifically in the dividend aristocrats, this is a way that you can screen them in a little bit of a more effective way. But yeah, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you learned something new in today's video. Once again, I wish, I wish I knew this kind of stuff, you know, when I first started learning about dividend investing. Now I know that not everybody is gonna be an individual dividend stock picker. I personally think if you're, if you truly believe, if you're a new dividend investor, you should first stick with ETFs. Um, really high quality dividend ETFs, and then kind of dabble around and, you know, slowly as you learn more, add, you know, individual dividend stocks, if that's the right thing for you. But if you're a stock picker, or if you invest into individual dividend stocks, this is a great way to manage your portfolio, screen your portfolio, and uh, especially if you're investing small amounts or large amounts in individual companies, this will help you pick the right time 
of when to invest into one company versus another company. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you learned something new and I'll catch everybody in next week's video. You know what? I think we're gonna be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner.